Hi everyone, so we're going to discuss uh, the Bernoulli equation. So let's start with some uh, objectives. Uh, we're gonna review some dimensions, some definitions from previous uh, lectures to kind of put in context of the Bernoulli equation. Uh, we'll talk about um, the Bernoulli equation itself and we'll also present some dimensions as, as well as some examples. So just as a, re a refresher, right? When we're talking about dimensions, we're talking about either the MLT system, which is our mass, length, time, or we're talking about our FLT system, which is our um, force length time dimensions. Just, just as a recap, because we're going to go back to this in a minute. Uh, also, as a reminder, the definition of the hydrostatic uh, pressure distribution is that right uh, pressure is equal to the specific weight of a fluid multiplied by um, the depth so if you have some cistern that has some fluid in it right the pressure at the bottom is going to be gamma multiplied by the total depth of the fluid. Um, just as a reminder, and then here is essentially that exact same equation. I've just manipulated it where um, H is pressure over specific weight. Also, uh, continuity for steady and compressible flow where density is constant is Q equal VA, and that is a constant um, as we go through a pipe network. So you have these two points here, and at each of these points, you have uh, some velocity, so V1, let's, this is position one, you have some velocity. At position one, you also have some pressure. So just as a notation, um, this kind of means we're slicing the, the pipe. So this is, a, this is essentially a picture of a pipe segment, okay? meaning that there is a pressure at both ends of the pipe, okay? Um, at position one, it's at some elevation relative to datum, and we have a similar situation at two, where we have um, some velocity exiting at two, a pressure at two, and an elevation at two. Now, the Bernoulli equation um, essentially tells us that um, the total energy in the system is constant as you move from one to two. So if we were to write this as an equation, it would say that P1 over gamma plus V1 squared over 2G plus Z1 is equal to P2 over gamma plus V2 squared over 2G plus Z2. So this is, this is the Bernoulli equation. Okay. Um, now, if we look at this picture here, okay, we can, we can basically say, right, we, from observation, right, that Z1 is less than Z2. Right, just from observation, we know that. Um, so that if we draw some arrows here, this is lower and this is higher. Okay, well, let's make some further observations in this system here. Now, let's say that the pipe diameter does not change. Okay, so pipe diameter is constant so D1 is equal to D2. Okay, now going back to our conservation of mass, what does that mean? Okay, we have one inlet, we have one outlet, so Q1 is equal to Q2. Okay, so as we move through the pipe, our diameter is not changing, so this goes V1, A1, V2, a2. If our pipe diameters are not changing, then aren't these equal to themselves? Aren't these equal? If they're equal, then you can divide by both sides of the equation and you end up with V1 is equal to V2. Okay. So in this particular example, in this particular case, okay, the velocities are they're equal. 
they're, they're not changing going from one end to the other. So if we go back to this equation here, there's no change, okay? Okay, on uh, of our V1, V, V1 squared over 2G is equal to V2 squared over 2G, right? Okay, so now going to this equation, what has to change then? If, our, if, if they're equal, if both sides of the equation are equal, then mathematically, right, if this value is lower than this one, then what does that say about our pressures, our, our piezometric head, our, our P uh, over gamma? What does that say? On the left-hand side, this must be higher than the pressure on the, on the right-hand side of the equal sign. So that's essentially what Bernoulli equation is telling us, is that there is a balance of energy divided between your pressure head, your kinetic energy, and your elevation head. Uh, to sum that up, uh, Bernoulli equation is the sum of the, our pressure head um, plus our elevation head and our velocity head. And um, if this is a condition uh, for steady flow, um, flow that is incompressible and, in, and inviscid and it is constant. This is showing something um, a little bit different, right, where we have our flow moving from uh, one to two to three, okay. We have our uh, piezometric head for each point, and you can see it's changing um, as we're moving along the system, and this line here, this represents the total energy in the system, okay? Um, you can actually set these up going from one to two to three or one to three or two to three. So let's look at the dimensions. So P over gamma, what is that? Mm, not really sure, but for sure, I know the dimensions of Z. What is the dimensions of Z? Remember, that's FLT, MLT. The dimensions are length, okay? Now, in order for us to have a dimensional homogeneity, that means that each of these components must also have dimensions of length. And this should make sense, right? Because remember, P is gamma H, and H is P over gamma, where this we know is the depth of the fluid. So that's got to be some um, length. So just to keep it, just to keep in the back of your mind, when you're dividing pressure by your specific weight, your units need to cancel so that you have some uh, unit length, which is typically feet or meters. So things to note. Um, when you have the Bernoulli equation, when you're using the Bernoulli equation, you are assuming there are no additional sources of energy, okay? Now, this is not going to be true as we go into the, uh, the full energy equation, but it's okay for Bernoulli. And we're also assuming that there are no energy losses. Examples of sources of energy we'll learn are like pumps, and losses of energy will be like friction, okay, or turbines. So we're going to assume that we're not having any losses, we're not having any other sources of energy um, in order to assume that we're near the equation. The conditions to use this equation are that we have steady flow, we have inviscid fluid. This just means that we have no friction right? Um, and incompressible, this means that our density is constant as we're moving along the pipe. That's really important because, again, if you go back to this equation, V1, P2 over gamma plus V2 squared over 2G plus Z2, right? you're using this specific weight of the fluid on both sides of the equation. So it is important that this condition be met. Okay, this is a really, really important condition. 
The next thing we're going to do is a really simple example. So we're going to have flow moving from the left to the right, so from one to two. Um, from this configuration, um, we know some information about the um, diameters just from looking at it, and we know some information about elevation. Okay, first we notice that we have a horizontal configuration, okay, where Z1 is equal to Z2, right, because it's following the same path line. We also notice that the diameter is the same as we move through the pipe. So again, from conservation of mass that I showed previously, we know that Q1 is Q2, and because the diameters are the same, A1 is equal to A2, so then V1 is equal to V2, okay? So as we go and um, plug in these, these, this understanding into our Bernoulli equation, we end up with P1 over gamma, plus V1 squared over 2G plus C1 is P2 over gamma plus V2 squared over 2G plus Z2. We have our horizontal configuration, which means that Z1 and Z2 cancel. Our velocities are the same, so that cancels our equations. So then what does that mean? If our If we have a horizontal configuration and we have no change in the pipe diameter, that just means that P1 is equal to P2. That's it, okay? Whenever you're approaching these problems, you absolutely must write what's given, okay? So always write what's given in the problem statement, but there's also information given um, that's in the actual image itself. So be uh, cautious and make sure that you look at the actual image to see what else is given, okay?